think we probably got a little bit lucky there. Let's just um, jump through. Let's get to. It didn't feel like I had much advantage. It felt like I was sitting waiting more than anything else. But I suppose in a way we we got basic position. And it really was down again to the opponent potentially making some sort of mistake. And we basically knew that this rook was going to be coming here to attack this pawn. So we prevention is better than cure. So I brought the rook here. So it's all kind of defensive work. There was nothing really meaty to go with. So brought the rook across protecting the pawn. And then also we realized that uh, it wasn't, wouldn't be a nice thing if we got a little bit of a fork because we were looking to either mobilise the knight somehow, you know, getting it up there. But if we did that, we're giving up this space and then he's basically going to get a fork on all three, you know, the rook and the rook and the knight and the queen. So again, playing defensive work, just bringing the rook here, just blocking it off. And then the queen is down, wasn't too sure really what that was doing, so... That made me feel fairly comfortable that I can bring the knight across now that the rook is protecting this pawn so we can look to attack the knight and they do actually capture the rook is in the center of the board a little bit squinchy about it but he's kind of I don't know if that was a mouse slip or not there's nothing in the um, chat saying it was a mouse slip so he's blocked his own rook in with that king move that he'd done earlier so now he's moved it so we're looking to exchange, we know the computers don't like the exchanges but I'm thinking well if we can get them rattled a bit and maybe utilise this kind of poor majority maybe against them if it went down to the wire on that score. But they don't go for the exchange so we take and again look at it saying no, it's not happy with the exchanges. You know I can't play like a computer so I've got with Queen G5 with a check. Yeah, so it's going for a little check here. Where else does I don't know where else does it go from there? Is it looking to attack the rook or something? I don't know. Anyway, we take it off the board and push the pawn up now, getting it supported. We bring this rook back because it's in the center of the board and it's not to my benefit. This helps support so that then we can at least look to get maybe this pawn pushed up here. And if this pawn does disappear with any exchanges, then this rook doesn't get this rook for free. So we push up and yeah, look at that minus 3.3. Yeah, what is it actually saying? King f1. Okay, so it's worried about the king not having a flight square and stuff. Okay, well, we pushed anyway and then we pushed onto the king. It it did feel a little bit flimsy because I'd, I'd let a pawn go. Not this part, but uh, up here. Yeah, this back pawn. Yeah, I let that go, but in my back of my head, I'm thinking it doesn't really matter because this pawn is going to come past, put a check on. I did think his king was just going to sit in front of the um, pawn then, and that would have been us covered in a sense. But they actually took, and the king did sit there. And we pushed the pawn. And well, now we're thinking basically this centre pawn here is just ramping home now. Yep. I think really their rook should have probably come to this pawn here. This is what I thought it was going to do. So that's why it was a bit of an erroneous manoeuvre. Yeah, let's see what it's saying. Rook c4 for them. Yeah, yeah, rook c4 should have gone here. So there's victories that you say, oh yeah, they're really good and there's victories where you go, my God, that was absolute pants. This is one of those pants games. So we bring the rook looking to support. We can't do anything else. He's got the force of the centre pawn that could potentially um, kick us into touch. And they look for some sort of fancy exchange. I'm thinking this might be our opportunity. Grabs. Get the king up and if his king comes behind our pawn then we're going to go and get promoted aren't we so then yeah 
that's pretty straightforward after that point so like i've always said 70 75 percent of games that i play um when i've looked at the evaluation of them and um, the majority of those times are basically where the opponents made a mistake they may have had a better position they may have more material or whatever it is and somehow they allow us to get it in because they make like a massive blunder and that's the case in point on the games that i play as well where i'm maybe advantageous and yet then it just slides away and the opponent goes whoa i've got i've got i won a game but i i didn't really win it they won it for me so all the time constantly with chess it's this trying to break down as best possible those blunder type situations and as you've seen throughout the world it's a kind of impossibility if it can happen to world champions ex-world champions it can happen to me and it can happen to you